Hi everybody, it's Dr. Dave Wonorowski, co-author of The Immortality Edge from www.drdavesbest, that's D-R-D-A-V-E-S-B-E-S-T.com. I want to introduce you to what I'm going to call the Immortal Hip series here. In the following video segments, which were shot live in Boca Raton, Florida in December of 2010, concomitant with the release of our book, The Immortality Edge, I am bringing you some additional information that I think you absolutely need to have. Now, our book is loaded with incredible information, and I think everybody on the planet should read it. There's no other book like it out there, but it is a book, and that means it's a static piece of information. It can't grow and change, and I can't put any more than the publishers allowed me to put into this book. So, in order to give you additional value, I've created this series, Immortal Hips, where two of the top trainers at the Institute of Human Performance in Boca Raton will guide you through what I consider the absolute essential exercises to keep your hips young, supple, and keep you moving through the rest of your life as a young person. Why did I choose the hips? Well, the hips connect the lower extremities and the upper extremities. And as a physician, I can tell you most of the pathologies or problems that we see in the knees and the low back are actually due to problems in the hips and pelvis. So we want to get ahead of that, we want to fix that, and we want to keep you young and supple for the rest of your life. I hope you enjoy the information on Immortal Hips. Thank you, and don't forget, get our book, The Immortality Edge. It's available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all major booksellers. All right, everybody, it's Dr. Dave from www.drdavesbest and theraceagainstdeath.org. I'm here with Cesar Sucre, the sugar man. And uh, Cesar is uh, from, uh, from Panama, and uh, he's one of our uh, great trainers down here at IHP. And uh, Cesar uh, is a runner, as you might have guessed, uh, and also interested in long distance running and has really mastered a lot of the exercises that you can do and should do on a daily basis. So basically, this is the basic five exercises we want you to do every every day that you train at least four to five times a week, uh, especially in your strength building phases, but more or less all the time. These are the kinds of things uh, that will improve uh, not only your hamstrings and your quadriceps and your ground reaction forces from your feet and your calves and your uh, gastrox and your soleus, etc., etc., but they're also going to help you transfer rotational motion. And we talked about the serape effect earlier. We're talking about hip stabilization. So what you're going to see is five basic exercises that slowly progress from very basic two-legged to not so basic one-legged. Okay, Cesar, take it away, buddy. All right, guys. The first thing we're going to do right now is plain and simple. We're going to do body weight squats. Okay. Nice and easy here. We like to put our hands behind or you like our neck in here so we can keep that you know, like straight posture at the time we're going down, okay? Because you tend to see a lot of hip flexion because of the tight hip flexors. So we're gonna start here. Very nice and easy. See? See, it's like a nice starting warm up for those hips. See? Bilateral movement. Okay, I'm just gonna do a couple of more. And from there, we're gonna go and continue with the progressions, okay? Try to keep your waist in the heels. So like basic standard, you like squatting. Uh, techniques okay and you can see Caesar is definitely hinging from the hips not from the low back he's trying to uh, we, we use the words take down here to mean uh, create movement or create motion and when you take motion from the spine you are not taking it from the hips where it belongs to be taken from so keep that in mind okay Caesar next all right from there we're gonna go and you like add a little bit more motion everything is about movement everything is about just trying to keep that body in you know, like constant motion we're gonna incorporate now to the same squat a, a kind of like three planar movement which is good you know, like for loading a little bit more of the balls and you know, like working on that you know, like hip mobility that's what we like to call ABC squat so we start with the regular squat in here front and we're gonna tilt to the side see and side so he's really pushing those hips out, right, Caesar? Those hips out. See, when I'm taking my butt to the right, I really try to use my hands to generate some lever and really push that hip in the opposite direction. Okay. okay. A couple more times. Yep. You guys can see, okay? And try to keep the feet in the same squat position because actually that's when you like where the pelvis is gonna come from. Because if I'm basically moving like that, it's just like doing the same squat in the in, the, in a different direction. See, we need to just like to keep our feet basically in that same plane where we're doing the squats at the time we're gonna go 
to the opposite side. So, so really working in that in that tri movement. Really pushing those hips out, right? And really accentuate that motion. Okay, what's next for us, Caesar? Okay, from there, we're just like everything should be about progression. So now going from doing uh, bilateral movements using both of our legs, we're gonna start doing some exercises, you know, like to eventually take you into the one leg. Because remember, that's you know, like one of the basic essence of locomotion. At some point, running, walking, and everything, the locomotion, the, the one of the main essences of locomotion is that we're gonna be at some point in time on a single leg. But we have to do that progressively. See, from there we're gonna go to the split squats. The uh, important thing about the split squats is, see, when you're gonna take this position in here, which is also a progression to a proper lunge technique, see? We would like to have our hips right here just on the squat, but if, if you draw an imaginary line in here, see, our femur is not gonna be aligned with our hips. That's when you know you're in the proper position to perform a split squat. You wanna start you like also opening those hips like so. See, see? Again, like I told you, if you draw an imaginary line, your femur is gonna be basically not aligned with your hip. And from there, here, see, heel off. Going down, same thing. We have to try to keep those sink that straight position, especially when we're coming down. What I like to do is usually put my hands behind my waist, see on my lower back, to enhance a little bit more of that proper you know, like uh, technique at the time that I'm going down with this pistol. This is a great uh, progression to just like to to be a better lunger and stuff like that. Because like when we do lunges, movement comes into place, momentum comes into place, and it's a very easy potential to do the the lunge in an in a inappropriate way okay see i'm gonna do a couple more with the other leg see and then from there we're going down like that see again i can put my hands behind my legs caesar what's the difference between having your back foot up and your 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 uh, foot down you mean in here yes if you if you try to force your it's less uh, of um surface so it's actually a, a, another type of progression see it's less base of support okay if i'm here it's gonna you know, like challenge your, your balance a little more it's less of the base of support you're gonna have in the ground okay see and from there what we're gonna do is the one leg anterior your reach okay which is a great exercise now we're gonna actually progress to the single leg patterns it's a great tool and a great exercise to enhance the the locomotion pattern see so what you what you want to try to do in this one it's if I'm gonna be on my if my leg left leg is gonna be on the ground, then my right hand is the one that's gonna try to reach. I mean, you can do it with that same hand, but it's gonna be hard because you know, like you'll be working basically. See, you um, it's lateral, which will actually is gonna just you know, like uh, challenge your movement coordination. You wanna have that contralateral movement that you use when you're running. Right. So that's the other way we like to do it like that. See. Right. So from there, on a single leg, we like to just you know, reach down, bend the knee a little, and come back up. See? Okay. And so and you're back putting back. your your back leg is off the ground it's going back and your front leg is the base leg obviously and you're going through a bit of a running motion there right. just like you could sort of imagine yeah it's a little bit accentuated but if you tighten this up a little bit you could see that Caesar would be running right right so this is the perfect agonist antagonist exercise for runners. And Caesar, I know that sometimes if you really want to show off, you come off the ball of the foot just to add that little extra bit. So why don't you show us that? There it is, a little bit up off the ball of the foot when he comes up. And that makes it even uh, stronger. Beautiful. So And from there our last exercise is okay, um, basically a single leg squat. So single leg squat, right? Single leg squat just like to enhance mm -hmm. and promote a little bit more of a single leg strength. Okay. Strength on the, Great. On the knee joint and all the like all, all and right. all the legs in like particular. See? Okay. There are two different ways actually to do the single leg squat. You can do it with the leg of the front, which actually is gonna be like um, emphasize a little bit more in the quads. Quads, mm -hmm. so I'm just gonna there, see? Right. Cool. And I can go with the leg in the back, it's going to emphasize a little bit more in the boots. Okay. okay I want to do it from this side so you guys can see. Okay. Yeah, and that's cool. more the running mechanics type of exercise, correct? You can see this one coming out of the blocks or just even just running. And Caesar's not having to go all the way down because you don't do that when you run. It's unnecessary. If you want to build phenomenal quad strength and balance, you can do that. But for runners, what would you say, maybe a quarter to a third of the way down? Just a 
repetition, especially for distance runners. Caesar, real quick on, on this concept of these five exercises, how many reps and, uh, would you do? You can, you can keep it on the same, you know, like, uh, let's say, hypertrophy patterns from 8 to 15, uh -huh. or functional patterns from 10 to 20, as, you, as you're getting you like more and more okay. familiar with the exercise. Eventually, you would like to keep it from you know, like 10 to 20 reps each, you know, like inside, uh -huh. or from the functional modalities, which is you know, like uh, pretty much the, the type of exercises we're doing. Right All right. And would you do maybe three sets? or Three, three to four sets. Uh, remember, always with progression. Always you know, like listen to your body and... Um, let the body tell you how many reps you can do and from there you're gonna go to the you know, like uh, traditional you know, like patterns or standard you know, like amount of reps that you should supposed to be doing with the exercises. Right and one final point here for everybody out there who's running you may find these a lot more difficult than you think at first. Pay strict attention to your form. Do these in the mirror so you're not wobbling all over the place and if you are losing your form then shorten the exercise up. No, Don't go down as far with your squats. Right. Uh, just keep the form get, until you can get and you'll progress into a better and better uh, form and deeper and deeper into the exercise. Absolutely. And beautiful, Caesar. Thanks so very much. Thank you so much, guys. I hope this uh, information will be helpful for you guys. All right. Caesar Sucre, ladies and gentlemen, from Institute of Human Performance, Boca Raton.